First sentence has five words, second sentence, one, two, three, four, five words as well. So I'm looking for ten volunteers, and you may choose any word in any of the two sentences to identify part of speech. Please abbreviate the part of speech, put it right underneath each word, okay? I love how many hands are up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> now the rest of you be watching and because I'm going to ask you if you agree or disagree with the choices that have been made at the board. So I would like you to be thinking about it. If you have any questions at all, this is a good time to ask them. Megan. Um, I think my the determiner. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So in this second sentence, instead yes. of a pronoun? Yep. All right, what makes you say that? What is um, your thinking on that? When I went back and looked at it, it says that, it, <coughs> that it's a possessive determiner. And that's like, it's, it's like, it describes the person. Okay. We've talked about sometimes a word could be more than one part of speech, so we have to look at how it's functioning in the sentence. What does a determiner do? It announces a noun. And is and this announcing a noun? Yes. Okay, what noun is it announcing? Sun. Sun, right. It's determining the noun sun. It's announcing the noun sun. Okay, excellent. Would you please come up and change it? All right, anything else? That's perfect, and to spot it so quickly. Awesome. Um, what is the, the fact that we have several people that are looking for these things. Everyone else is in agreement about everything else. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's fixed. You guys are catching on to this much faster than I expected. Oh, you do? Let's look at each part of speech. Um, dad is a noun. Tell me about it. Who can tell me at least three things about the noun dad? James? It's a proper noun, it's singular, and it's concrete. Okay. Everyone agree it's a proper noun? Yes. If we used it in the middle of a sentence, would we capitalize it? No. We can have it capitalized. Why? Yeah, because, because it's the meaning of the sentence. It's first word in the sentence. Yeah. So we have to think about it. Is that the reason it's capitalized or is it a proper noun? So I think we can agree that it's a common noun, right? Not normally capitalized. All right. Excellent. Um, tell me about reading. Or I guess this is read. Um, it's an action verb because it's something that you do. Okay, it's an action verb. Excellent. Can you tell me anything about um, its tense? It's past tense. Past tense. It's read. Excellent, excellent. All right, what do we got here? Um, pronoun. Well, if we are going to label it as a pronoun, what kind of pronoun is it? Uh, it was. Uh, oh my God. Flip back. Let's just take a look and know for sure because that might be important information in our next row, right? Kathy. Object. It's an object pronoun. Yeah. And we use object pronouns as direct objects, indirect objects, and objects of preposition. So good to know that we have an object pronoun here. Okay? Um, uh, is a determiner? Yep. Yeah. Tell me about it. What kind of determiner is it? Oh, wait. Can I see? Um, what page 12? Um, yeah, it's, um, it's, oh, it's an article. Article. Is it definite or indefinite? Um, it is. Um, Do we know the specific story? No. So indefinite? Indefinite, right? It's not the story, and we all know which one we're talking about. Dad read us a story. Oh, cool. He does that all the time. That's cool, right? But we don't have, it's not a specific story. So it's an indefinite article determiner. And tell me about the noun story. How many things can you tell me about it? Caden, what can you tell me about the noun story? Um. Proper common? Oh, common. Common. Anything else you can tell me? What are those other categories of nouns? What Excellent question. Six, I believe? Because I think pronouns are nine. It's singular. Excellent. 
What about is it concrete or abstract? Abstract. No, because concrete, you can't feel a story. Right. You can feel a book. <laughs> but the story is something that gets said and it's in the air and it gets into your heart sometimes, into your head sometimes. Okay, <coughs> excellent. Tell me about my, the determiner, which we've already mentioned, must be a determiner, but what kind? I don't think that was mentioned. Who knows what kind of determiner my is? Be looking. It's a pop, um, possessive. Possessive determiner, and that makes sense because the sun belongs to me, right? My sun, all right? And we said before that a determiner always announces a noun, so we know this is a noun. Tell me, what What can you tell me about the noun sun? Person. Um, let, let's go with Lauren, you said. Um, it's concrete. Okay. Uh, common. Okay. And singular. Excellent, excellent. Common, concrete, and singular. Plays. Tell me about this. Haley. It's an action verb. Action verb, right. Do you know, is it past tense, present tense, future time? Um, it's, it's, um, present. It's present, isn't it? Yep. And, uh, cause he currently does. He might not be at this minute, but he currently is playing the guitar, right? He does it at present. Um, and tell me about this determiner. What kind of determiner is it? It is an article, Tyler. Excellent. What kind of article? Definite or indefinite? Definite. Yeah. Definite. It's a definite article. And it's an article, I mean, it's a determiner, so it's announcing the noun guitar. Who can tell me, what can you tell me about the noun guitar? What can you tell me? It's concrete It's concrete. It's singular. And what's the third one? Common. Common. It's a common noun. Excellent. Now we're ready for parts of the sentence. Yay. This is so impressive how quickly you identified parts of speech and um, how you're being able to talk about what they are and what they do in the sentence. So now I'm looking for seven people to come up and identify parts of the sentence. Parts of the sentence. So, were you up for the first round? No. Okay, so yes. Who wasn't up for the first round? That's what I'm gonna call them first. Two, three, four, five, six. Who else hasn't been up? I like to make sure everybody gets a chance. Ellie, you haven't been up. Yeah, I have. Oh, you have? I'm sorry. Clayton, have you been up? You haven't been up. You have been up. Go My goodness. Go go Kaylee, were you up? Yes. Yeah. Lauren, were you up? Yeah, yeah you were. I have Kate, were you up? Yeah. I'll go up again. What? But I don't know what we did. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. got it, got it. Okay, James, go up and finish this up. Yeah. Hmm. All right, who is going to, let's look at my son plays the guitar. Who is going to tell me how we know that son is ending up being the subject of the sentence? What, how do we determine what the subject of the sentence is? Matthew, what would you say? Um, because it's a noun, it's a noun, it's a noun, or it's Okay, it's a noun. And the son is the one playing the guitar. Great, the son is the one doing the action. It's all about the sun, right? That's what this sentence is about, my son. All right, tell me how you know the predicate is plays. Alex? So I'm removing the sentence and it's describing what the sun is doing. Excellent. Number one, if we look at parts of speech, it's the only verb we have. And number two, it is the action that the sun is doing. So the subject is doing this action, excellent. All right, now, what is the question we ask ourselves once we've determined subject predicate to know if there's a direct object? Brian? My son plays what? My son plays what? What's the clear answer to that, then? Guitar. Guitar. So <laughs> guitar has to be our direct object, okay? The guitar has to be the direct object. Now, how do we know there's not an indirect object? Because I see there's not one labeled. How do we know there's not one? We know we should look for one once we've found a direct object, but how do we know there's not one? Alex? 
it doesn't say who it's uh, playing the guitar for. Right. Who's receiving that guitar playing? We don't know. That's not part of the sentence. And what about this word, the? Could that be an indirect object? Uh, no. 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 What's this word's function in the sentence, so Megan? To announce the noun. To announce the noun. So it's got a job here. It's not going to be our indirect <coughs> object. When we have a de determiner, we don't want to get tempted to think that's an indirect object. It will never be an indirect object, OK? Excellent. Let's go over here. Who's going to tell me how we know that dad is the subject of the sentence? How do we know that? Zoe, what can you tell me about dad? What can you tell me about dad in the sentence within the side? Um, because it's a noun and it's the uh, describing. Well, number one, it's a noun. A mm -hmm. subject is always a noun or a pronoun. Number, what else could you add to that? Um, he's reading the story, he's the one who's reading the story. Right. And they're talking about him. Right. This sentence is all about dad. Yep, he's the one doing the action. Okay? Excellent. Tell me about how we know red is the predicate of this sentence. Haley? Is that something he did? Right, it's the action he did. Plus, what's one other thing we can always double check? Matthew? It's the only verb in the sentence. We look at parts of speech, it's the only <laughs> verb we have, so it's going to be our predicate. Okay? Now, oh, the next thing is labeled as an indirect object. Is that what we should look for first? No. 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 Okay. So tell me what question we're going to ask ourselves to find out if there's a direct object. Ella, do you know? We were going to ask Dad Red what? Excellent. And what's the clear answer to that? Story. Story. That's our direct object. Now that we have a direct object, it, we need to look for an indirect object. Okay? How do we know that us is the indirect object? How do we know that? Clayton. Um, because Dad read the story to us. So we kind of received that reading, right? Okay. And remember yesterday I talked about we could take this word here and move it to the end of the sentence and make it part of a prepositional phrase. Can somebody rephrase this sentence so we could do that, Caden? Can I read a story to us? Yeah, we could do that. And it's clear then, too, that we're receiving the story, right? We got it read to us, right? So excellent. Indirect object and direct object. You guys rocked the 